So why does society and people, well, some, not all, but some people in society allow or give a pass to celebrity abusers? Um, it's like they're enabling them. Hits. Oh. I no, think, pun in, no pun intended, but I just thought about if you, yeah, hits, if you have hits, you get a pass. I think so, too. I think that's partly the thing. It's we, we like your music or we like what you've contributed to fucking my pleasure. So you get I'm, in, I'm inclined to not go with the wave. I turn the music fell off. Yeah. That's cr- it's not even it's not Say even the hits. There was yeah. there are even like for example. So we'll kind of go straight into it after this introduction. But my name is Aaron Ashley Simon. I'm Brandon Kilby H Hall, and we have Nas and Wilson uh, with us today. Thank you. <laughs> y'all are whack at your intros. Yeah, y'all. <laughs> y'all <laughs> intros. But, uh, I have nothing for my intro. I don't, awkward I never pause. Know to, I never know what to do. Yeah, <laughs> like the pause in the introductions be oh, so hey. trash. Huh. I'm Najim Whipper. I don't know what to do. Right. Just introduce yourself. You got to work on that. You got to <laughs> yeah. work on that. But anyway, we're going to get straight into it. Um, recently, Fabulous has had uh, quite quite a moment. Um, originally, he uh, was, well, allegedly before, he was said to have abused his wife, yes. Emily. Mm-hmm. But now, there's footage that came out about an incident, which kind of makes it a little more difficult. But going back to what I originally was talking about, it was crazy because in his Instagram, there were women who said, um, I wouldn't mind you hitting me, basically, because you're fine as hell. Idiots. They probably have low self-esteem. I mean, I, I don't know. This whole situation, to me, is, it's, it's alarming. Um, it's scary. It's scary in a sense only just because, like, it's so close to, I guess, my vicinity. Like, to see them both in this kind of bad space is kind of crazy to me i honestly like for me i'm kind of getting it's getting a little bit tiresome how we're giving these celebrities we're giving these professional athletes and etc passes just because they are uh talented at something when we we have to separate the art and the talent from who they are Mm -hmm. sounds like a plan and you would hope that happens but that's not the way america works yeah. I don't think that any artist has gotten a pass recently, though, for, you know, beating up a woman. Even Chris Brown, I mean, you can kind of look at it. You can kind of look at it as like a pass, but he never fully recovered from that from that incident. I believe he did. He's still it, making a lot of money. He got his project, went platinum. Yeah, he's that talented. Little Dicky, that the uh, volleyball team got in trouble for saying nigga because they were singing the chorus. Well, even all that though, you 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 still have this black cloud over you when you're an artist when you do shit like that and even when you're a celebrity yeah, you know what I'm saying? yeah like you're not that that taints you for quite some time well no it depends mm. it, it it honestly depends on who you are because ben roethlisberger was is an alleged rapist and i can't stand him he's mm-hmm. also white exactly and they never bring that up anytime he gets in trouble anytime he does anything they never bring up his past he i mean multiple it was like a mm-hmm. summer he had summer hits some after summer. Yeah. And also the thing is bad too because we're giving the younger generation a bad message. I mean, there have been there's younger artists that have had court cases or videos or, or anything of that nature of them beating up a woman. And those artists projects are on billboards, hot one hundred and this and it's just kinda like we're giving a I, I think that us allowing um, celebrities who are abusers to basically get away with murder, quote unquote, is sending a horrible message to younger um, audience and demographic, and allowing them to be like, okay, well, yeah, he beats up women, but his album is fire, though. Like, no. Yeah, but I think um, I think this is different. This is different. Like, I, I, we talk about Chris Brown. We talk about uh, XXX. We talk mm-hmm. about a bunch of just allegations and things that have happened where you don't really see, like, proof outside of uh, Chris Brown because you, you see the physical rule. Triple, well, yeah, Triple X had that slap. Yeah, you, you see it. That. But oh, X had, X had, oh, sorry, X, 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 he had stuff against him, too. Well, he had actual proof. Actual yeah. proof. But what I'm saying slap is, I think, I think for me, uh, are we surprised that, at Fab? Like, did you, uh, when, in, in the day and age where all these allegations and things are coming out and, and shit's happening, did you, did you ever put Fab in that box of 
this happening? As as Aaron, who works in industry, I would say I'm not surprised in the sense where I've seen so many times that the facade that celebrities put and like put on for other people is not really who they are. Mm -hmm. So as industry Aaron, I'm not surprised in that aspect. But if I was like regular Aaron, who's a fan, maybe I would be surprised because his whole demeanor and his brand is about being cool, calm, collect, chill. And then you see that video of him buck wild and going crazy and it's just it's kind of like seeing like like would you think it's out of normal to see jay-z like fucking flip a shit and try to hit beyonce yeah well, that would I mean, be completely out of out of quote-unquote character so it was, I, was, I was about to say and that the elevator uh <laughs> fight was out of character you know what i'm saying like well but, it was in character for solange based well, on yeah, the, the but, daddy's yeah. like and, that's solange and, <laughs> and, and, and quiet is kept i 100 percent had solange wilding out I, I looked at her as the sister to wild the fuck out regardless so when that happened i was just like oh yeah i see that i see that happening so i wasn't really tripping <laughs> but to your point um with facades and branding, did he hit a, a ceiling of not being able to control that? Like, I wonder what happened. So for, for the listeners out there, apparently uh, Fab was in L.A., uh, L.A., rather. Um, I don't know what the fuck he was doing, but uh, Emily B. was out there. He didn't, uh, Fab didn't know that Emily was going to be out there. It caused a fight. He threatened her via text message. Um, it then... Uh, spilled over in Jersey, uh, where they reside, and it then went south, uh, apparently uh, and allegedly. He punched her in the face seven times, knocked out her front teeth, um, mm -hmm. threatened to kill uh, family, her family members, father, uh, and someone else. But TMZ just leaked a, a video where it shows him... Menacing. Yeah, saying that uh, he's he's going to he's got a bullet for all of them. So well, yeah, I mean, I would have grabbed a knife. Yeah, <laughs> uh, I I don't know, but um, I don't know, man. I just I just this whole situation for me is is a lot. Like I I just it's a lot. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like to. I mean, well, I guess it would be different for you though. Yeah, it's it's a lot. Because you're kind of, kind of close. It's it's a close lot. Close. I mean. Yeah, it goes back to our conversation about the one we had with Maul, where it's like when you have when you have someone in your circle or someone that you know, like doing something like this, like how do you go about really addressing it? Yeah, I don't know. I mean, Fab's not in my circle. I'm just. I just well, you're 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 degrees away. You're yeah, closer degrees yeah, away than so, most of us. I mean, it's it's just a lot to see him. Like Fab, I know is always calm, cool, collective, always joking. Just, just a cool dude. So, watching this video, I was I'm taken back by it. You know what I mean? And then I instantly just go to praying for both of them because, you know, that that that's a lot. That's a lot. So, I don't know. I mean, I hope they get through it. But what kind of it, single can he come back with after this? He I thought I he, thought about that too. He can't do like the go-to chick record. Yeah, like a you, violent track. Yeah, you. I don't. I don't. This impacts you, it's not feature. just from a music perspective, but like... He's human. I mean, that, and when I look at that video, that's what I say, man. We're all human. He, whatever, he, whatever it was, and, and I'm not trying to justify it, mm -hmm. but he's human. He made a mistake, and... No, I'm, nah, I'm you human. punch a girl's teeth out. You're a monster. No, yeah, listen, I'm not, I'm not trying to justify it, and I'm not... No, I know that. Yeah. But I'm just saying. I'm just saying, it, it, when people say, like, oh, I, I'm shocked, it's hard for me to get shocked. With, with stuff like this. I, and I, I guess that's because of my profession outside of this, but he's human, though. Yeah, but you also have to understand, like, us black folks, like, we don't get passes, really. Yeah. So no. you can't, you just being, oh, you're human, like, that's not going to cut it because once you do something, even if it's minimal or something small, it's going to be put in your back in your face, especially as a black man, mm -hmm. or used against you. So, like... I understand the whole like yeah he make mistakes but like you really can't be making things like that yeah, I, and no, not I, expecting I, I it to agree, like fuck your whole life up. Yeah. On like, top of that, if you're a millionaire, the least you could do is keep your hands to yourself. The least you could do, you got everything in the world. Keep your hands to yourself, man. <laughs> but we were, we was talking about that earlier. A lot of times, it's more than money. Like I know artists that have real issues, like anxiety issues, and yeah. and, and and deal with. They don't know how to, uh, they were social butterflies, you know, in their previous lives and now become antisocial or uh, socially awkward because of the limelight, because they have to move different, because they, they, they now are operating in a certain way. Mm -hmm. So 
the person that you would know broke and the person that you know with money are two totally different people, have two totally different agendas, and have two totally different energies about them. Mm. So, I mean, it, th- that changes. That changes. So I don't, I don't think money plays into it. He probably is, and I don't know, he could probably be extremely unhappy mm. and wealthy. Yeah. A broken person is always going to be a broken person with or without money. Definitely. If you don't yeah. handle things, especially internally, it's only going to add more and more and more. And that could be a possibility. He could have had dealt with something and it continues to build and build and build. Yeah. And then it came out the wrong way and it came out in a, in a vicious and, and uh, allegedly horrible way. And I think that that goes back to the whole discussion of how there's there's a need for mental health within mm-hmm. hip hop. There's a need for conversations and even mental health support for artists. And I'm wondering, like, if a lot of these artists did receive some mental health, because Rob Markman said, it, when you come out of the hood, you're going to have some some sort of PTSD 100%. or some some issue. You're going to because of the hard things that you go through. Yeah. And I'm wondering like how would this affect hip hop? And I said this before, how this would affect hip hop and how would this change things if mental health support was more available and more accepted and talked about within the hip hop community. I also think though as well, like even for I guess celebrities in general, they should have like mandatory counseling sessions. Like when yeah. you're doing the love and hip hops of the world because that shit changes you. It, it can change, about that. Yeah, it changes you. It, it you you look at people differently. You you move different. At all. I just think that th- that needs to be taken into consideration. And I, and again, I don't know. I'm, I I am curious to know how this situation got to be this. Looking at it in in all its endeavors, I'm I'm very curious. Like, what yeah. was in L. A. Why was it that a big issue? And that why this even became an issue with the father coming to the house. Like, I, I, it's a lot. There's a lot to process. Involved. No, I think it's more power there and control. There had to be a man in L.A. It's power and control. With, um, with Emily. It's all power and control. Mm. Think so? Yeah, I think it's something small. And he, I think he, I'm just speculating. I don't know him at all. But relationships like that is if I, if I can't control you, you can't tell me why you in L.A. And I'm out here. That's a power and control. That's a move. That's to show that he's in control, you know. And like you said earlier, it's it's a buildup of certain things. So her being in L.A. is probably just like she doesn't respect me enough to tell me that she's coming to L.A. with her family. Now I gotta go check her, and it spills over to New Jersey, you know. Yeah, but do we think it was a family? Like this don't sound like a family thing. Something, I, something happened. Like yeah, that's between them. And the cops. Yeah, like, I don't know. I feel like it's already too much in the media at this point, so... Well, I know he has a couple of charges from looking at that video besides the assault. You got the menacing, if their kids were in, if their kids were there, you know, endangerment of wealth, the welfare of a child. Shit could get hectic with the DVs. Didn't they say he might have potentially had, like, a knife or something on him? Yeah, they said he had a knife or something on his hand. I, you can't really make it medicine. out from the, yeah. from the video. Allegedly. Allegedly. And then yeah. he said he had a bullet for the, the father or some shit. Or. As, as a threat? <laughs> well, one of the things that I'm a little bit concerned about, aside from, you know, this potential alleged opportunity of him abusing his wife, um, is that there are people on social media how now when it comes to situations like this, they're like, Oh, is his wife lying? And my concern is like subject matters like this and subject matters even about rape. It's like now we're kind of like a period of time where there are people who will doubt the accuser or doubt, and it doesn't necessarily have to be a woman. It can even be a man, but they doubt the accuser now because there have been previous experiences where people have cried wolf and it didn't actually happen. That's something that kind of troubles and worries me is that when someone is in that situation, it's like, Instantly, Twitter was like, oh, she's probably lying. Now, I'm wondering if they're saying she's probably lying because previous women have lied about that or because it is Fab himself. Yeah. I don't think, I don't think that women should be accused of, you know, lying. But I, I don't think that, you know, asking the question of what happened should just be out of, like, untouchable. Like, you can't, you can't even ask, like, what happened in the situation to make this man who's been 
in the media for what? Almost how many years now? Like over Shit. 15 it years? Easily 20, 20 years or something like to that? To just snap yeah. out of nowhere. That's my thing, though. You know what I'm saying? That, like, I, I, and, and again, to your point, I'm not justifying it. But what what was it? I keep saying it on this episode. Yeah, what, what, what gets you, what what gets you, that, gets you that mad? <laughs> I have a theory. I think that people with money, like a lot of money, like to the point where they can buy and have anything that they want in their life. Mm-hmm. I think like almost to a certain degree, aside from like narcissism, narcissism, I think they also start to like crave forbidden fruits. Yeah. That's why you start to hear about like, you know, they may be, you know, Participating in homosexual acts, or the, and, the Hollywood backroom, or or DB domestic violence, or just things that are forbidden. You know what I'm saying? You start to feel untouchable, though. Who's you know what I mean? Breaking, and it, breaking rules. You, you said start that to before. That you're not. It's one of those yeah. things where you're untouchable. Well, at least you feel like that. Yeah. You can do whatever you want. There aren't any repercussions. Uh, repercussions. You haven't been scolded about it. You're. You, no one has checked you on it. That's dangerous. That's super dangerous. Yeah. It is. Yeah. It is. But most of these celebs go through that. Like, yeah. no one's gonna check them because the people that are around them are trying to make money off of their success. So yeah. You're, I, and that's a lot of times where you see people who have camps that are like the the celeb is is basically dying metaphorically on the inside. They are going through depression. They're doing drug problems, and people are enabling them. Yeah, yeah. yeah. didn't like wasn't that what happened to John Belushi? Mm-hmm. He they they said that um that they were fans and even crew members that were giving him cocaine and just giving him drugs and give him drugs. And there are people that are like no, like he needs to sober up. If I'm being honest, though, and this is me just being conspiracy theory, man, I think that they were sabotaging him purposely Why? because he was getting too big. And I heard that he, 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 you know, he started making demands on set. There was a lot that went into that John Belushi shit. So I think that that's one of the things where it started to get a little bit hectic. And you, you, you go for the jugular. You go for someone's weakness. His weakness happened to be fucking hardcore oh. drugs. So... All right, um, Cardi B. She's Cardi, moving, yeah, as Cardi usual. B uh, just signed with Quality Control. Uh, for those that don't know, that is her. Uh, I guess their boyfriend and girlfriend, right? They're not engaged or anything. Just say boo. Right? Yeah, that's her. Uh, I don't. I don't like. That's boo. her booze. It is right. I don't know what, but that's her man Migos. <laughs> uh, uh, and, you know, Little Yachty is signed there. The Migos are signed there. Her, obviously, her significant other, Offset, is signed there. Do we think uh, Cardi is? This is too close to home from a business perspective. Yep. Think Why? It's a conflict of interest. Why? Because you. What if the relationship goes sour? Business should be business, no? It should yeah. be, but it's, it's never like that. Yeah, but contractually, right. though, like. She could, if they break up, it doesn't mean that they'd be seen together or be near each other. No, nah, that's too close for me. She's arguably the biggest solo artist at QC. You think right. she's bigger than uh than? She's not bigger. She's not bigger than the Migos. Is she bigger than all three of the Migos? No, she's not bigger than individually. Yeah. Right now, the only one that could see her is like Quavo. But even 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 Quavo hasn't had any solo hits. So I would say Cardi. Mm, I don't know. I, I think Cardi B's bigger. Right now, it's a solo act. Well, we were talking about this before. We were talking about artist development. And Aaron, you had an interesting theory. And then I had a theory on just artist development and the label. Let's talk about Atlantic, what, what that means for, for Atlantic as well. All right, so... My thing is, is like, okay, obviously, like, when it comes to labels, there's really not artist development, and I feel that what's happening to Cardi now, and I've actually seen people who are actually upset about the, um, her recent single, Mm -hmm. and they felt that, you know, it's taken away from who she really is, and I feel like when she signed to Atlantic was kind of like them... And I'm not saying this in a bad way, but I feel like Atlantic maybe is trying to have her appeal to everyone instead of mm-hmm. her core audience. And it's concerning some people. Like, people want the the red bars Cardi B. They want the Bodak yellow Cardi B. But I they feel essentially like, kind of like what happened in a sense to Nicki Minaj at one point. It's just that she's becoming more appealing to 
I can just say she's become more appealing to the white demographic now. Yeah, good. But then that's taken away from, but that's taken away from the core audience that supported her from the beginning. Because you have to think about it, like her core audience were like strippers and like yeah. people who watch world star hip hop and stuff like that. And then now she's appealing to an audience that, you know, some of them drink lattes and and stuff yeah. like that. Get that money, man. That's I'm, what you're here for. And I know this this may be premature. I'm concerned. After the single, she uh she released a record called Be Careful. Fire. I like the record. Fire. Um, I don't think it's a great follow up record to Bodak Yellow. I don't think it should have been a single. I, it, what? If if it is going to be a single, I would have put it at the three or four marker. Yep. That record should be on the decline when you don't have anything else to put out and your album is now reaching almost its lifetime of the label pushing it. For those that don't understand that that logic or, or way of thinking, albums and projects and artists have a life expectancy with every label, right? So when you do that, the label or whoever is backing you, they're only going to invest X amount of dollars to push that project and or to make you, the artist, be successful. I think once it comes to that part where, you know, you start to get there, that record should have been thrown out. I don't think that's a great record to follow up. Now, is she coming off the momentum of uh, the record with Bruno Mars? Yes. Is she coming off Bodak Yellow still? Yes. So I get that. My only concern, and, and being honest, only because of the way she's tweeted, how she's handled the media, mm. and we talked about her media training, I worry what happens when Cardi, the person, is not perceived the same way Cardi, the celebrity, is now. Like, she seems like the type of person that doesn't uh, know how to deal with all of this. It's a, it's a lot. And, and granted, it is. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? She went from stripping to being one of the biggest artists out so i worry about her fall off and everyone has a fall off that's not hate but we're i think everyone in, in, in this room is rooting for uh, for cardi but i worry about her mental uh, stability coming off this yeah. this this run you know what i'm saying like how does she handle it she she, she was getting anxiety just off of people talking about uh when she released the the album artwork and yeah. then how they didn't think it was coming out. And she tweeted this whole thing like, yo, just let the music breathe. And, mm -hmm. you know, I have bad anxiety. This isn't helping. Like, yeah. I, those are real tweets. Yeah. I think also when it comes from, like, a content standpoint, of course, like, you always want to appease your core audience because they're the ones that got you to this specific point. Um, and kind of what I thought wasn't good was that they released a song that is a little bit different than what she's previously released mm -hmm. towards the release of the album. If she wanted to introduce that, like you said, she should have put it a little bit earlier. And I also think that when you're doing a debut album, I don't think that is a great opportunity for you to try and experiment on your yeah, sound. Yeah, That's no. not the perfect time to do it. You need to bring what your audience liked, and you can, you can make it a little more mainstream. You can have some more mainstream songs, but you still need to bring what your core audience have always loved you for and always want. Your debut album is not the time to be doing experimenting with yeah. sounds and different vibes. Like you want to build consistency. And when you have content and your audience gets turned off from it, that can cause some issues. And that's got the reason why she got some backlash. People are like, what the hell is this? Like, this yeah. is not the, we want the Bodak, the red bars, Cardi. We don't want this, Cardi. Yeah. And that's why I think the big issue with the record is like I know Wilson and and Naj, you gave it like a seven point five, but you give everything a seven point five, so you're kind of voided. Negative. <laughs> I I think that the record is good. I just think because of Cardi and to your point, how big Bodak uh, was and and her brand, it just doesn't fit right now. It doesn't fit right now. No, I think it does. This should have been a leak record, if 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 anything. If I'm her. But I mean, I, I don't know. I, I hope that um, the other thing before we move off this, do we think Cardi has something else in the tuck? Because a lot of people speculated that she didn't have anything, any, anything else as no, far as does. singles go. I was surprised they threw this out. Yeah. I really thought that it was going to be the, the announcement of the album cover and the date. And then we were just going to have to sit and bake. I didn't think that they had anything else or would have something else to throw out. But now that this record is out, 
what do we think? Do we think that they put something out just because they needed something out, or do they think, or do we think that they put something out because this was uh, was a part of the plan? I don't know. I think that was the song in the top, man. You think so? That song is fire, yo. That song is fire. It sounds like Drake wrote the the hook. Well, no, the uh, no, I know the other dude had. Wrote yeah, it. the other guy. But it sounds like like Drake. Record. He's an idiot. Parson Fontaine. Yeah, well, that's the other thing too. Why would he do that? That song is well, fire. Well, no, he didn't. Uh, I think uh, he tweeted that video. I Way think it was before. like a year ago. He did it ago. like a year ago. like a ago. year, year oh. and a half ago. So, But my thing is, even with that, um, do we hold that against Cardi? Like, I, we no. don't hold, we can't nah. hold that against no. Cardi. Like, nah. I, don't, I don't think anyone. She's never denied having writers. Yeah, like, I yeah. don't think anyone sat here and really said, yo, you know, Cardi's writing all her records. And, like, I'm I'm not really tripping off that. And she didn't say she's the greatest lyricist, female lyricist. Yeah, yeah, she yeah. Just, yeah so. She just is. <laughs> she's just there. Technically. It's just there making music. I'm I'm really curious, though, to see what her first week numbers will be and second week numbers. And then I also am very curious to see what happens after this run. Like, what is the plan? Yeah. Mind you, QC hasn't missed. I, I will give them that. Lil Yachty, well, maybe with his second album. Yachty, still, though, Migos, like, they're they're doing a great job right now with their their artists. So, I don't know. I'm curious to know if that single release happened pre or post negotiation with quality control. Mm. I'm curious to know if it was the previous management team that, that made that decision to release it or if that was part of the quality control decision. That's actually a good, que- uh, good question. Mm. The plot thickens, doesn't it? It always does. <laughs> I, don't know. I don't know, man. I think that uh, people are going to be surprised. Yeah. With, with her numbers, and I think that pleasant, become, pleasantly surprised. Yeah. What I mean, do you think? What do you think she's gonna do first week? Honestly, and if you're not a numbers guy, well, me and my friends, we always play the numbers games. So. Or you could just say, how, like, how soon do you think she's gonna go platinum? A month. A month. Hmm. This guy okay. just wild out. Yeah, he's crazy. A month. He, he doesn't play numbers games. Wilson, not at what all. Do you, what I, don't, do you I don't play. I don't play numbers games at all. I just do it out there. What do you got? <laughs> for her to go platinum? No. What do you got first week, second week numbers? First week, maybe 100, 150K. Okay. What do you got, Aaron? Well, before I want to do that, um, I think her numbers are going to be high no matter what because it's our debut album. People are going to be curious to see. It's kind of like with Chris Brown's 40,000 single <laughs> album. Yeah. They're going to listen to it, and when you do the streaming, it's going to count. Um, my thing is, I think she, I think I'm going to, I'm not even do about numbers. I think I'm going to talk about from a review standpoint. I think she's going to have, she may have mixed reviews. I think she may have mixed reviews on this debut album, unless she just comes with that hot fire and before she releases it, quality control and her team, like redoes like redo um the entire album based off the response of that single which is possible well yeah that's a that's actually a good point she did uh tweet out after releasing the record uh be careful that uh the album is still coming she's just putting the finishing touches on it but she was working on one or two records that she fell in love with and was trying to polish up and getting them remixed in order to put them out so the masses and her fans can hear it so that that's actually a good point could be an a b testing kind of thing could they, be they probably were like hmm maybe we'll see how this resonates and then they got backlash they'd be like all right let's pull back a little bit yeah um no, we, shall, we shall see. Yeah, we'll see. I don't know. But shout out to Cardi. Um, Fucking the game up. Yeah, she's still doing <laughs> something different. Gr- great numbers. Oh, and, and my number, I got her maybe 120, 130 first week. So, anywho, um, let's move on to. Well, this is a more interesting thing. So, everyone knows what's going on with uh, Stephen Clark. Yeah. Stephon Clark, rather. Um, Terrible kid was in the in his backyard apparently uh, got shot and he he didn't they uh, the cops had thought that he had a uh, gun on him he didn't uh, but um his brother uh, has been going on uh, a parade of trying to you know obviously stick up for his brother he was shot six times so um, he's pretty hurt he was on Don Lennon you know really upset and um, I he it was twenty huh. 20? No, I said uh, shot six times in the in the back. Oh, he, got hit, he got hit six times. He well, yeah, six, 20. yeah, 20 okay. times shot at. Um, Damn. Yeah, yeah. What, what's more? Excessive. <laughs> it's excessive. Yeah. 
it's or excessive. more deplorable, the, the actual killing or the fucking bad aim? 20 <laughs> shots. That's true. Also, didn't they do it in his backyard? Wouldn't they be concerned about if they're shooting and the bullets go somewhere else that could potentially hit someone? I think that's the least of their concerns. <laughs> <laughs> you fire off 20 <laughs> shots, man. No, but I'm saying, like, you're in well, a backyard many, and you how shoot. How many officers were there? I don't know. I don't know. A few, I, I think. There's more than one. If it's more than one, if you got like four officers, five officers, then that's three, three or four shots each person. You ever try to eat a McDonald's 20 piece chicken McNugget? No, never. That's disgusting. <laughs> Imagine 20 bullets. It's a lot of fucking bullets, man. Yeah, where, I know. Where is where's the, the cor- yeah, where's the correlation between <laughs> chicken <a> nuggets <laughs> and 20 bullets? I'm just trying to say 20 is a lot. That's all I'm saying. But that makes no sense. 20 like, is a lot. Have, in, any, in any situation, 20 is a lot. You ever eight white castles? <laughs> Getting at a cab in New York City is fucking terrible. Like, what the fuck are you talking about? Cla- classic Wilson. Classic <laughs> Wilson. Nevertheless, it's it, lot. it is a lot. But um, his brother um, marched into, I think it was like City Hall or something like that. Uh, pretty ballsy was standing on the council and, and was yelling and, and parading about his brother. And, and, you know, it clearly upset. Um, this may sound crazy. Do we think he's going about it the right way? <laughs> no. I mean, it's difficult. Because the first thing that popped in my head when I saw him jumping and jumping up and dancing and hopping was like, what the fuck are you doing? How Man. is that, that going to give change? Mm-hmm. You think oh, he's thinking about change right now? I think he's angry and hurt. His brother got shot six times by the ones who swore to protect and serve. Okay, so now you're painting, the right way? But you're painting a narrative that says the cops just rolled up in the backyard, saw him, and said, Yo, we're going to execute him here in the backyard. That's kind of what they did. That's not what that's not. <laughs> that's, that's a pretty not, accurate description. That's not at all what they did. That's not, and it's a false narrative. So, so what's the other side of that? Okay, well, for example, if people feel like when it comes to Black Lives Matter, they're not being heard, doing things like that, they may say like, oh, well, that's not going to have people listen to us even more. They may mm-hmm. be like, okay, that's looked upon as being an ignorant, ignorant black man in the sense of how he's responding. Now, I'm not calling him that, but someone who's against the Black Lives Matter may look at that and be like, oh, look how ignorant they're being. Look how rowdy and rude and, and disrespectful they're being. That's going to make them not e- listen even more yeah. when it comes to this situation. But, I mean, because we're, you know, when we, you know, comment on things like that, you know, we're more so thinking from a rational mind. You mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? This man's, I, I think the last thing on his mind is Black Lives Matter. His brother is fucking gone. in the dirt. Yeah, his brother's gone. Got shot and killed by the police. I, I don't think he's worried about his image. He's more so worried about his own pain. Well, not an image thing. Yeah. I'm, my, my thing is, because uh, you can't tell someone how to grieve. You know what I mean? There are people that cry. There are people that act out. There are people that fight. And then there are people that are just quiet. My thing is execution. He obviously has an agenda, right? His, his whole mantra is trying to get people to say his brother's name because they won't say it. They, they avoid the conversation of discussing what happened with his brother. I get trying to bring awareness to it. But my concern is... Is that why he was ringing the bell? Well, no. Well, yeah. I don't. That was weird. That's probably one of the more peculiar interviews I've seen in 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 these cases. Where you know we, what I'm saying? Where, what, what's his aim? Where, what's the goal? What What are you aiming to do? Well, I don't know. I mean, to to be on a public uh, platform like CNN and then to bring a, a bell with you, I, like I don't understand it. And again, it, it's, it's probably not meant for us to understand. We probably yeah. would never understand it. Maybe that's something his brother did, and maybe, I don't, I don't know. Or maybe I, it was him ringing a bell saying it, message. Yeah. I, I don't know. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like there's, there's a number of things it could be, but I just think of... Wilson just got the uh, Don't Be a Menace reference. Yeah, he clicked. <laughs> yeah, good job there, big guy. Um, <laughs> I don't, I don't, I don't know. I don't know. Uh, I don't know. I, well, I would say, kind of going back to what you were saying. Um, of course, there's no specific way that you can tell someone to grieve, but I think that everyone has to understand. No, no matter what the situation is, you always have to understand that perception is everything. Yeah. 
no matter mm -hmm. what situation you're in. You could be mad, sad, happy. Perception is everything. Um, because that's what, I mean, That's that kind of goes into why certain people are saying all lives matter and, and trying to justify the killings of certain black men and certain individuals is because of the initial perception of either the situation, initial perception of what people were saying. Now, I'm not saying that's bad, but if when you have, especially when you're on media, not all media platforms purpose and agenda is to show unbiased reporting. They're gonna show biased reporting, AKA Fox News. Mm -hmm. So you ha when you understand that, you have to, if you're trying to get a message across or if you're trying to prove something, yeah, you may be upset, you may be happy, you may be angry, but you have to understand that people will utilize the perception of your actions either to support you or against you. Right. And you have to think ultimately, like, what are you, what are you trying to do? Like, are you just trying to uh, grieve? Is that what you're, you're just showing yourself that you're grieving? Are you trying to make change? You have to understand what you're doing. And if your perception doesn't align with that, you, you have to look at it. You have to evaluate it. And I know it's kind of hard for him to do it right now because he lost a brother. But if he really is trying to make this into something that's bigger than just him grieving, he, he, has to, he has to focus on that. He has to focus on how am I being perceived through media because media is going to skew it. I work in media and that happens. They're going to skew it for the purpose of clicks or views or something like that. So he has to be aware of that whenever he's doing any kind of media or even if he's in the council. It sucks, but you have to be aware of it. Yeah. I think I think most people will give him a pass right now just because he's yeah. grieving. Yeah, but, but I, to a point, to a point. To a point. Uh yeah, I agree. I agree with that. Even though again, you can't put a timestamp or categorize or just grieving so i mean is it it's, it's a thin line but i get them you know question though do you feel that it takes someone not even just black it takes a minority to out to 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 kind of like um what's the word to lash out in order for media or anyone to really pay attention to the serious matter the you I mean, like, you, you, you got to act out of character. You have to yell. You have to scream. Well, not even act out of character. Like, they have to, go over like, the, the energy, the ener yeah, go over the top or just bring a different sort of energy because, like, when it comes to certain, I mean, the, the shootings and everything, like, that's been happening for a very long time. Yeah. And in certain cases, not even with this, but, like, certain situations and social issues, it wasn't until, like, a, a, a white person or a white woman talked about the situation. Yeah. Then it became a media spotlight. Well, that's Uncle Tom's cabin, ain't it? But do you believe that it took for that black person to kind of just be like, enough's enough, and just come out with intense emotions and energy in order for them to pay attention and to even put it onto the news? It's kind of like a catch-22. Do you feel like that's the case? Or like, why do you think that media is really, really paying attention Because now? it's the narrative. It's the white cop, black man. And, that, and they're trying to sell, to use all antiquated kind of terms, sell newspapers. But this stuff has been always going on. Why is, did the media just pay attention specifically to that black person who in is Sacramento? carrying that narrative? No, not just that. I'm just saying in because general. It's, this a divi thing. it's a divisive topic. It's, a, it's controversy. And people are always going to be split. I'm from, I'm from the, the school of... Just like Malcolm X said, it's a fool who, who let, lets his enemy teach his children, right? You, you're stupid if you let your enemy teach your children. So why wouldn't it be the same thing for protecting our neighborhood? I know it's a, it's a, uh, it's yeah. a div, it causes division, but what I'm asking is oh, I'm not answering the question. why? <laughs> yeah, no, no, I was about to say you got just mad deep right now. I couldn't, oh, no, 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 no. I, was, oh. I, I couldn't process that. <laughs> well, no, I'm just saying like. The, it was like it the takes a village minorities to being, being shot and in killed. America. <laughs> no, <laughs> but minorities <laughs> being shot and killed, and people being, and, and even people being shot and killed by police or or anything like that that's been going on for a very, very, very right. long time. So my thing is, what do you think specifically? And aside from social media, aside from social media, what do you think specifically caused media to finally be like, okay, we are going to give you this spotlight to talk about your problem? Was it because? a good amount of black people just were like, fuck this shit, and it caused an uproar, and they were emotional, and like you said, it might be fit a specific narrative. Like, what do you think specifically caused me to really pay attention? Because like I said, there have been previous 
situations where it, it took for them if, to pay attention. If I'm keeping it a buck, it's because black people are trending. We're clickbait now. But we, but we've always been. They've always appropriated our culture. Now more than ever, though, we are clickbait. He's we old. are clickbait. When something happens and it's trending or not trending worldwide, news and media take that and use that as something to, to talk about. <laughs> we're I trending. Do. We're we're in style. I hate to play devil. It's devil's advocate right now for me. So it's the white man is bad. The heterosexual white man is bad when it comes to uh, allegations of Harvey Weinstein. Harvey Weinstein was the LGBTQ community or even Black Lives Matter. They're all the common thread is that heterosexual white dude over there is a real problem. So if he wasn't the issue, if it was somebody else leading leading the charge, it, it wouldn't be as big. Because it, it's again, it's the narrative: the white cop, the white male cop shot the black man. I don't know if I'm rolling, because there's many cases where it's. There's black cops or minority cops that have shot minorities, and it, it, you know what I mean. Like there's there's multiple well, that cases. Does, that narrative doesn't sell. What, what was George? It wasn't like George Zimmerman like Spanish or some shit. Yeah. Yeah. He could yeah. pass for white though. He that could pass for yeah. white though. He, he's one of them Spanish from Spain. Yeah. Even even if a black cop shoots a black kid, it's going to be the same. Yeah. No, it's not. It's, it's it definitely will be. That, there was a situation. That it happened. was not. I think it. I, and Baltimore to, is the perfect example. To Wilson's point, well, which it, one? It's it's a cop versus. Uh, civilian thing. No, it's not. It is with a sprinkle of race. No, it is. No, this, the race is the main ingredient. Baltimore, when they when they locked that young man up in the van and they drove him around uh, Baltimore before they got to the police headquarters, that was a black sergeant. Those are two black sergeants and black officers. There's like two white dudes in there. That was not as nearly as big as when a white officer kills a black man. That was still pretty big, though. That was big. That's because it had come right after a white man killed a black kid. And that's right after Zimmerman killed uh, the young Trayvon Martin in Florida. My whole thing is, with the going back to the villages, if you're educated black man, black woman, Lat Latino man, or, or, or Spanish or Latino woman, if you don't got no criminal record, and you all you want to do is fucking flip burgers at Burger King, why don't you go be a cop? What's wrong with getting that job? You so worried about other people policing your neighborhood. You so worried about Black Lives Matter. There you go. Going go, from, go, go ahead. That's a wild. But if, uh, yeah, going from flipping burgers to I, but I'm just, I'm, protecting the people. Nigga, you just talk about 20 nuggets versus 20 shots. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yo, yeah. <laughs> I'll, I'll eat 20 nuggets before I become a cop. But I would say the only difference, though, is that there, the citizens are funding certain things when it comes to police. So they have a right to say how they feel about certain things. If, you, if your taxpayer money is going towards a specific person or profession or anything, you have the right to ask questions. So you should want to be engaged in that also. That's what I'm saying. Engaged in what you, sense? You, you can't just have this dude from outside of the community come in and then expect him to understand the culture and then get mad if he doesn't understand it and he's, he's acting in fear. I will say, though, there have been discussions, especially like in Boston, which is one of the most segregated cities. There have been discussions. The thing is, it takes something of such grand media national attention in order for people to listen. But why, why should the media have to force you to want to get a good job? No, no. What I'm saying is the discussion of basically fixing up and improving your police system. There have been discussions about that. Getting more people who are from the community itself instead of outside the community. The even situation of police brutality, that's been a discussion even before everything blew up. So to say that, you know, to educate people and having that discussion, the conversation is happening. The problem is, is that people don't want to listen. People think that they are right. We see this on social media. People argue for the sake of just arguing enough to listen. What are Nimrods? That's most people, though. Yeah. Common sense is not common. So No one wants to be wrong. People always want to be right. And people don't want to uh, admit that there's a better solution that doesn't come from them. Everyone wants to be, everyone wants to be the hero. No one wants to be a listener. Agreed. It's at your whip. Underscore, <laughs> so it's y o underscore w h i. Are you gonna teach the masses now? No, because I know they're gonna say something in the comments. They probably will. Who cares? I'm gonna uh, say something in the I'm comments. Ready. I want it. I want that um, 
Ah, another sad day, man. DMX. So we had this great idea. (laughs) We had this great idea to talk about DMX. I had such a great idea of number of records after we heard that he was going to play his music in in, in the courtroom uh, because he was going to court for a tax evasion. But then uh, the judge gave uh, DMX a year and also let him play Slippin'. Um, And it didn't help, really. Well, I guess it helped, but... um, do we do we see DMX turning around? I know he said that he needed it. Uh, he he obviously fell on hard times. What do we think? Do we think that uh, we'll ever get DMX of old, and not obviously DMX of old that was making that same type of music, but a healthier, stable DMX? Eventually, think so. Eventually, I mean the drugs get old. Hopefully, you know. Mm-hmm. Drugs don't get old. Drugs, never, gets, they, yeah. drugs have no shelf life. Yeah. Well, I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm not talking. <laughs> I'm not saying that the That's drugs are, are literally going to get old. I know old. what you I mean. Was, I mean, like, they're going to get old for <laughs> Yeah, him. I know, but I just thought it was petty. And I thought it was you guys funny. are OD petty. Yeah, it's fine. It's o- OD. Fucking Wilson. <laughs> 20 nuggets. Drugs, drugs <laughs> don't get old fine. to addicts. I mean, the first step is to, it, is to accept that you have problems, to yeah. accept that you're, you're fucked up. So at least he did that, because most people don't even get past that stage. Mm-hmm. Hey, I hope he gets better, man. He needs that year. Yeah, I would like to see him. Uh, you know, like the old Flavor Flav, Flavor of Love. Imagine DMX <laughs> looking for love. If I ever see DMX <laughs> looking for love, fam, <laughs> that's a wild reality show. <laughs> call it. Call I'm it. looking for a dog to be my wife. Rough in love. Yeah. <laughs> Not to mess up my nights. <laughs> Get at me, dog. Flavor, 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 Instead flavor. of giving out uh, roses, he gives out dog collars. Word. That's fire. That's my, fire. Be my bitch. As, as, a, as opposed to giving out wedding rings, he's giving out collars. Studded. They would, oh, they would put flames fire. to his ass. <laughs> they would put flames to his ass if he saw the hand of uh, the Pause. Anyway, there's <laughs> nothing you can say. That's a wild pause. I gave you a chance. <laughs> I gave you a chance. <laughs> Um, but yeah, uh, all jokes aside, uh, I hope he gets through it, man. I've always been a, a huge DMX fan. I, I, I actually got hype uh, when he came out, like, what was it, last year or whatever it was. Um, and then I saw all those videos with him and Swiss in the studio working, and he was yeah. t- he started to get back into touring. But you can't escape, like, especially once they have their eyes on you as far as, like, the government goes. You can't go and try to get a... a a, you know, a bag full of money from doing a reality TV show and only ask for cash payments. <laughs> like, it's, it's just certain things you just... That's an addict move. Man. Yeah, like, you can't do that. Like, these pe- you're, you're on the radar. For, for the artists out there and entertainers, and you once you're on the radar of the federal government, you can't then go and start getting cash payments and... <laughs> putting uh you know bank accounts in your cousin's name and they they get large like it, it just you can't don't work like that so they definitely check after 10 grand. yeah like just be smarter man just be smarter you, you, tax evasion is is very difficult these days they're they're hip to it they're on to us people they're on to us well not me aaron but <laughs> they're on they're on to this so just be smarter and and be wiser, and I, and I really do hope he gets through this. And when you're a rapper and a celeb, they definitely put a microscope on everything that you do. Kind of goes back to the the hip hop police. Yeah, they got the hip hop IRS too. Agreed. They're watching. <laughs> Agreed. I, I, I agree. I agree. So, I mean, I don't know. I guess that's it for today. Uh, this is a nice, lengthy and in depth conversation. I think. Yeah. So many bars dropped. Mad bars dropped. <laughs> um, as always, ladies and gentlemen, check us out. Grassroots Pod on uh, Twitter, Instagram. Uh, f- still doing uh, music submissions. Going to mm-hmm. be checking the email today, and that is contact grassroots podcast at gmail.com. Uh, a lot of good uh, records that we got last week uh, that made our playlist. Uh, what, what, what playlist are we up to now? What is it? Playlist... 12? 12? I think so. We're kind of moving. Yeah. Our group me chat is growing. We yes. are now. Make some noise for that. A lot a lot of fans. Uh shout out to the fans. They they yeah. do such a great job. Like our our chat is like 24 hours a day where you can always just jump in and out of the conversation. It's really great. Mm-hmm. Um as always that will be uh at the description or in the description I should say of this video uh and audio that you're listening to. And um 
guess that's it. Yeah. That's, that's it. That's it. Yeah, that's it. Well, uh, I'm Aaron Ashley Simon. I'm Brandon Killer BH Hall. I'm Whip. I'm Wilson. <laughs> See what I'm saying? They're, yo, their their intros and outros are trash. <laughs> trash. I don't have a cool name like Killer BH. I know. All right. Or something as catchy as Aaron Ashley Simon. Work on it. Work on it. Work. <laughs> yeah, just shut up and do it. <laughs> and we out. Later. Peace. Grass, 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 grass.